In Florida, time is running out. I'll reemphasize in the strongest terms possible. This is an incredibly powerful storm, and we all need to take it seriously. Hurricane Milton is on a direct path toward Florida's Gulf Coast as we get a look at chilling new video showing just how powerful this storm is. And this is video from on board one of NOAA's Hurricane Hunter aircraft as it flew directly through Hurricane Milton this afternoon. And now to live pictures from Marco Island. It's the calm before the storm right now, but you can see those clouds are building. And right here, this is the latest track right here showing Milton making a landfall sometime tomorrow night into Thursday morning. So that means there are just hours left for people to get out, get to safety, and hope for the best. Let's kick off our coverage tonight with Kim Adams and where we stand here at the top of the hour. Kim. Well, I have to tell you, those hurricane hunters are invaluable when it comes to figuring out all the data that will help us determine the exact path of this hurricane. And so what they're doing is critical. And this is the data that we have right now. It is back up to a category five. It's been fluctuating back and forth between a five and a four. It just underwent something this afternoon called an ERC. That's an eyewall replacement cycle. So the eyewall is actually replaced. What typically happens after that is that the hurricane will become larger horizontally and oftentimes it can also become stronger. So the wind field is much larger now and that's going to continue to happen as it heads towards the Florida coast. Right now winds are at 165 miles per hour. Yesterday it was up to 180 miles per hour, but I don't want us to get too hung up on whether it is a category three, four or five. It is still a major hurricane. So even if it stays on the path, gets into some wind shear and weakens just before it hits land, it is still going to have a lot of wind, a lot of water, and it is massive in size, affecting nearly all of the peninsula of Florida. At this point, the latest is that it will come in at 2 a.m. Thursday morning, 125, 125 mile per hour winds. The track now is shifting slightly to the south, which would be good for the Tampa Bay area, but it doesn't matter as of right now. We have a lot of ocean to get through before it gets to land and things can change. Hurricanes are very unpredictable at the last minute. They can wobble either way, but we do know it is going to affect the majority of Florida with hurricane force winds, large storm surge, and also tornadoes that are spawned by it as well. It will go out to sea though by the weekend. One thing we're very concerned about is that right side of the storm. We call it the dirty side of the storm. So the circulation around a hurricane is counterclockwise. So watch here. This is about 7, 8 o'clock Wednesday night. Tomorrow night as it approaches Bradenton and the Tampa Bay area, those counterclockwise winds will be very tightly packed. And that right quadrant is where the strongest winds are. And also that's where it pushes that water with that flow again counterclockwise, pushes it on shore. We are expecting storm surge now anywhere from 10 to 15 feet, anywhere from the Tampa Bay area all the way down north of Cape Coral. So a large area. It's very different than Hurricane Helene for many different reasons that I'll explain coming up in just a little bit.